So Shukuk financing has uh, been uh, popular in our country uh, for last couple of years. Uh, however, uh, the Shukuk financing uh, was first coined uh, was first coined in late 1990s, and uh, for last decade and in the previous decade. Uh, Muslim countries and nowadays in uh, non-Muslim countries are also uh, trying to rely more on Shukuk financing or raising their financing based on uh, Shukuk securities because of its distinctive features. So, so what is mean by Shukuk? Uh, we'll try to know about this. We are, we are just giving some uh, I mean, preliminary overview of why we should be interested in Shukuk financing. So it is expected that uh, by uh, this year, Shukuk will, uh, Shuk, uh, by mean of Shukuk, uh, around 200 billion financing will be raised. So you'll check the exact figure and what is the current market capitalization of Shukuk and what is expected uh, in Shukuk financing market. So let me show you the contents we'll be covering today. Uh, the contents will see that uh, how the Shukuk issuance is growing and uh, who are the constituent parties in issuing Shukuk and what are the rules and what are some specific types of shukuk and what will be their structures and what are the issues which are raising concern over the shukuk securities return and uh, how the underlying asset plays role in shukuk and what are the risks associated with shukuk which uh, need to be uh, shared with the shukuk investors and uh, let me uh, explain some characteristics of Shukuk and what is Shukuk and what is not Shukuk. So before telling what is Shukuk, uh, let me give you uh, some ideas then uh, uh, not to mix up this with uh, uh, conventional fixed income security. So people who do not uh, know the characteristics and the distinctive features of Shukuk, they uh, understand that Shukuk is nothing uh, but an Islamic bond. And Shukuk is nothing, rather it is a kind of a conventional bond, conventional bond, but uh, the Islamic, uh, to make it Islamic, and uh, to attract the investors, uh, people uh, name this bond as Shukuk. And Shuku, uh, people uh, try to believe that there is no loss with the Shukuk like the conventional bond and Shukuk uh, market price fluctuates with the fluctuation of the market interest rate uh, like the conventional bond and uh, Shukuk should be included in the traditional fixed income class category of asset class, these things. So what we just have mentioned, these are some misconceptions we just have mentioned, okay? So, so now let's try to understand what is Shukuk. So Shukuk is more appropriately known as Islamic Investment Trust. Islamic, Islamic Investment Trust or Islamic Investment Certificate also, it is known as Islamic Investment Certificate. So one should not understand that, uh, like people tend to believe that uh, because of some uh, non-compliance of Islamic banks, People have a common belief, a common belief that uh, Islamic banks are not doing uh, nothing special, rather they are acting like a conventional bank. 
and on the same ground people tend to believe that uh, shukuk uh, is a kind of a conventional bond but uh, it is uh, uh, it it is not uh, it is not different from conventional bond okay so it is not a kind of thing that uh, the people who tend to practice Islam or the scholars who tend to advocate or who tend to uh, give the solutions uh, to the financial problems in the eye of Islam, uh, they tend to engineer some product uh, by making financial engineering and they tend to name it as uh, Islamic, okay? So yeah, we should not believe on, uh, we should not believe in, in that way, okay? So we, if we believe in that way, it means that we uh, either we do not understand the shukuk properly, or we do not try to understand the shukuk properly. So whatever the case, uh, First of all, we need to understand that it is a kind of Islamic investment certificate. So this certificate is used for raising financing or for raising fund or for raising capital for the purpose of uh, some productive activities. Try to understand, I have mentioned for the purpose of some productive activities. So far, what we have learned in Islamic financing instruments, you have found that all financing instruments are somehow connected to some productive activities, some business activities. And there is nothing like uh, uh, unproductive activity, okay? And the person who holds this Shukuk certificate, he has the ownership or she has the ownership in the underlying asset of the shukuk. So you have understood that uh, behind the shukuk, there is, a, there is an asset and shukuk holders jointly own the underlying asset. And that asset must be, uh, uh, must be a Sharia compliant asset. And the ownership is also based on the Sharia principles. And all have, uh, all have some beneficial ownership, and this is kind of a shared ownership. So you can relate it with the equity stake. You can relate it with the equity stake where uh, equity holders have uh, ownership, undivided ownership in the asset held by the company. And uh, shukuk holders, what is the benefit to the shukuk holders? If you own the shukuk, you will be entitled or shukuk uh, investors will be entitled to receive uh, an amount of income. And that amount of income is fixed. And that amount of income is fixed. That is the, uh, that is the area where people misunderstand the shukuk. Uh, because uh, I have mentioned that there is a fixed income. Uh, uh, if you own the shukuk, you will get a fixed income or you will get a fixed revenue. Okay. Uh, but the reality is that uh, what will happen if the underlying asset does not perform well? If the underlying asset does not perform well, and if the underlying asset uh, does not uh, generate enough amount of revenue to compensate the shukuk investors at an exit amount. So in that case, uh, the shukuk holders, uh, shukuk holders, as uh, remember, as they are owners, so owners cannot leave the property. So owners cannot leave the property. Owners can uh, sell their ownership, but owners cannot. Uh, uh, I mean, owners have to uh, share both profit and loss together. So shukuk holders, uh, when the 
uh, sufficient amount of cash flow is yielded by the underlying asset. In that case, it's okay that Shukuk holders will get a fixed amount of income. But when uh, the asset is not performing well, in that case, the Shukuk holders will get less amount of income. And if there is a loss in underlying asset, in that case, uh, I mean, loss means in a way that after managing, uh, after uh, covering all the expenses, after covering all the expenses, uh, if there is a loss, uh, in that case, Shukuk holders have to uh, incur the loss, uh, incur the loss together. I mean, all Shukuk holders. So what is the point of uh, incurring the loss? Because they are the owners, okay? So how uh, you see that some characteristics of Shukuk are similar to equity uh, and some characteristics of uh, Shukuk is similar to, uh, are similar to uh, uh, bond, okay? So if I ask you what is the, uh, similarity between equity and the shukuk. What will be your answer? So sharing the loss and profit together. Okay, then ownership. Ownership is also, yeah. I mean, it should be the first, right? Yes, yes, the first. Right. Okay. Then what is the similarity of Shukuk with the uh, conventional bond? Fixed income. Uh, sorry? Uh, so the fixed income will... Uh, yeah, uh, fixed is income is the similarity, but... Uh, uh, there is a misconception uh, which I have just have uh, tried to make it clear that when the asset is performing, in that case, it will remain fixed. Okay. But when the asset does not perform as expected, in that case, uh, profit will, uh, profit might become lower. Okay. Uh, but note that. Uh, Another thing, uh, why Shukuk is similar to conventional bond is that uh, like the conventional bond, Shukuk has a fixed maturity. So Shukuk can be issued for three months to one year. Uh, and Shukuk can be issued for uh, up to 10 years. Uh, like the conventional bond, okay? So uh, you probably have uh, uh, learned there is a difference between the note, a bill, note, and bond. So which has the longest maturity? Uh, bill, note, and bond. There is a fixed income no bill, fixed income note, fixed income bond. Have you heard about the treasury note? Yes, sir. Bond has the, uh, bond longest, has the longest maturity. Okay. So, uh, usually, uh, usually, the international definition of uh, bond is that, I mean, the maturity, uh, when it is long term. Uh, in that case, the answer is, uh, if it is more than one year. If it is more than uh, one year. And when it is bill, uh, if the maturity is less than 91 days, okay? And if the maturity is between 91 days uh, or 90 days to uh, one year, in that case, it will be considered as note. So in the similar structure of the maturity, Shuku can also be issued, okay? So, but Shuku is not a kind of Shuku, uh, it's only issued for, uh, I mean, 30 days or, uh, 91 days in that way. As well, Shukuk is issued for three months or uh, Shukuk is issued for one year or Shukuk is issued for five years in this way. So uh, let me show you some uh, differences between the Shukuk and the conventional bond. 
I will not uh, go over each and every point, but I will try to highlight some. Okay. Uh, when you are purchasing a conventional bond, uh, usually, uh, if you look at the financial market in a broader detail, uh, in most of the cases, the bondholders are not interested to see uh, what is the underlying of the bond. They are want to they want to see that who is issuing the bond and who is the rating agency and what is the rating of the bond and uh, what are the uh, what are they mentioning in the bond indenture and what are the covenants and uh, what are the collaterals and uh, who is the issuer and who is the trustee and if people see that uh, say market interest rate is five percent and the bond is uh, agreeing to pay coupon six uh, percent uh, in that case people tend to invest in that bond so People usually hold this uh, paper, okay? People usually hold this paper. People sometimes uh, are interested, but in conventional thing, I mean, in conventional bond, uh, people are usually given, uh, uh, I mean, no ownership in the asset. Uh, it, it, it is not the way, okay? So when you purchase a bond, you have no ownership in the underlying asset, right? Uh, that is why bond is different from the equity. But uh, you need to be satisfied only with the coupon payment, only with the regular coupon payment. But in case of Shukuk, in addition to the fixed income, what you are getting in exchange for your money, you are getting uh, an undivided ownership in the underlying asset, okay? So we already have made this point that how the conventional bond and shukuk are different in terms of the cash flow. In conventional bond, the cash flow is equal to only interest payment, but in case of uh, shukuk, the cash flows includes profit. So you know the definition of profit, it might include the loss. Okay, now the question is how likely that Shukuk will uh, cause you loss? So every investment uh, will uh, expose you to the profit or loss. Now, how Shukuk will expose you to the loss? So I already have mentioned one reason if the underlying asset does not uh, perform well. Uh, now, the thing is that, uh, is it very likely that Shukuk will incur loss or Shukuk will cause your uh, portfolio to loss heavily? Okay. Uh, the answer is the likelihood of loss is lower. So the question is, follow-up question is why or how? The answer is... Uh, when the asset performs well, as the rate is fixed, what rate? The profit rate or the income rate is fixed. When the asset performs very well, say the rate is fixed in this way, okay? But when your asset is performing very well, you have a cash flow of this amount, right? You have a cash flow of this amount. This amount is extra. This amount is extra, this cash flow. Have we got it? This is the fixed amount of repayment you are getting, and this is the actual amount of cash flow uh, your originator has generated for you. Or uh, not for you, but uh, originated for itself. Up to this clear? Yes, sir. Okay. In that case, is it possible that you will make a 
profit stabilization fund using this excess amount so that over time when your profit will come down here or for whatever the reason your profit will uh, go down uh, below the fixed amount of uh, repayment in that case you can also make up the payment uh, in this level will it be possible yes sir it would be yes. possible sir so that is how that is how the fixed income of shukuk is uh, maintained by the uh, shukuk issuer okay so you have got one of the ways but there are other ways and usually uh, shukuk uh, financing is used for uh, some profitable investment opportunities so profit is more likely uh, i am not ruling out any uh, loss probability but a profit is more likely because the investment opportunities uh, have been explored uh, in a more sophisticated way okay uh, now uh, you see that here there is a sale of asset transaction happens we will see that how it happens and here it does not happen uh, no sale of asset and this is important uh, when you are raising proceeds by issuing shukuk you are compelled to use the proceeds for sharia compliant purposes but you're not bound uh, to use the proceed for Sharia compliant purposes when you are raising financing through conventional bond, okay? And uh, like the conventional bond, it is a kind of similarities. Mm. Shukuk can be fixed rate Shukuk, Shukuk can be floating rate Shukuk. So when Shukuk is a fixed rate, uh, say 9% has been agreed. And it is fixed. And if it is mentioned uh, floating, it will uh, tell you that 5% uh, 5% plus the dividend percentage to the equity holders. Dividend percentage to the equity holders. So this amount is C, uh, dividend percentage. I just have mentioned for your uh, understanding. You see, uh, this percentage is fixed, 5%, but this portion is floating. This percent is very vari uh, variable. So in this way, a floating rate can be structured, okay? So it is also possible, in, uh, it is not different from the conventional bond. And uh, here, uh, there is a difference in terms of Sharia compliance that uh, when it is fixed uh, in a traditional or conventional bond, say it is 6%, but in case of floating rate, a uh, floating rate bond, usually the rate is fixed uh, or the rate is based on some uh, interest rate based index. Can you recall I mentioned lever in one of our previous classes, lever? Can you recall this? I mentioned lever. Anyone? Have I mentioned lever in any of our previous class? Uh, okay, uh, I got disconnected for unknown reason. Uh, 
what you uh, listened last from me? So you were you you were asking whether we have uh, remember when uh, a liver, people? right? Okay. Uh, can you recall that you have uh, listened liver in any of uh, previous class? Yes, sir. Okay. So uh, this rate is a purely interest rate based rate. Uh, purely interest market interest rate based rate. Okay. I have mentioned that it is a kind of interbank offering rate. Okay. Interbank offering rate. So when it is floating in conventional bond, they will mention that I will pay you a uh, lever plus 1.5%. So how it actually works. Uh, say for example, uh, the next due date is December 31. And previous due date was June 30. Okay. So the the issuer will uh, see my connection is very slow. Hello? Yeah. Sir, I'm on late connection to put it up. I don't know barber. Okay. okay, so I can't solve your problem right now. So you check uh, what can you do. Okay, you see uh, that uh, on December 31, we have a coupon payment due, uh, for example. But in case of uh, on June 30, the leave existing lever rate was, say, for example, three, uh, 2%. So in that case, what will be the percentage applicable for December 31 coupon payment? In that case, the percentage applicable will be 2% plus 1.5% is equal to 3.5%. Okay. So you see that this percentage is purely market interest rate based rate, this 2%. Okay, but in case of leave, uh, in case of Shukuk, there is a clear restriction that when you are when you are setting the when you are setting the rate for uh, Shukuk, uh, you cannot look at or uh, you cannot relate it or you cannot base it or you cannot uh, make a reference of the Shukuk rate with any of the interest rate. Am I clear to you at this point? Yes, sir. Okay. So what people do? What investors do? Investors see uh, that conventional bonds are paying 10% and Shukuk is paying 9%. So they directly compare these two. So when they see uh, that this rate is greater, they switch to conventional bond. But you see, apart from this rate, there are other things which cannot be, uh, which cannot be, I mean, which cannot be reflected by this mere percentages. Am I clear? What people do, people just look at the percentage rate, right? What investors look at? The uh, traditional investors. Yeah, they will look at the percentage. They just look at the profit rate, right? Or they ju just look at the interest rate and compare directly. Okay. But you see that they are not comparable. Why they are not comparable? Because the Shukuk includes some features for which this is different from conventional bond. If these two things are similar, if do, these two things are exactly same, in that case, you can directly compare this 9% with 10%. But you see, these are not comparable, right? Have you got my point why these are not comparable? Yes. yes. Okay, so you have to understand the uh, I mean, the theme of the Sharia. Sharia is they saying have some that, uh, different profit rate. Right. So you are not here in case of Shukuk, you are not here, uh, Mayor. The Shukuk investor is then. Hmm. 
So in case of Shukuk, you are not a mere, I mean, uh, you are not a mere creditor, right? You are here enjoying the ownership. Okay. And you need to be. This is the big difference. Hmm. Why people invest more in Shukuk? Right. So, and you also see that they have uh, Sharia compliance issue. Yes, sir. So these are the issues you need to be concerned when you are making investment, right? So some other value added features of uh, Islamic Investment Trust is uh, ownership. You are getting the partnership features, and you are also have to participate in the risk distribution. Okay, so. Uh, let's proceed. You already have seen this uh, financing instruments, right? You see this uh, financing instruments are already familiar with you. Yes, sir. Some, uh, many of them. Yeah, some of them, sir. Yeah. Some of them. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Murabaha, Istisna, Ijara, Salam, Musharaka, Mudaraba, Wakala. All have been explained in previous class. So far, I can recall. Okay. Wakala was mentioned in uh, deposit. Mudaraba was mentioned in both deposit and financing. Musharaka was mentioned in financing. Yes, sir. And Murabaha, Istisna, Ijara, Already Alam. explained. Right. So all have been explained in financing instruments. And they have been classified here uh, on the basis of how the contract is different. So you see that uh, Murabaha, Istisna, Ijara, Salam here. Uh, we can classify this in terms of uh, contract of exchange. But in case of Musharaka and uh, Mudaraba, we can classify this group in contract of participation and Wakala, we under, uh, got it in case of uh, deposit products. We mentioned it as a agency kind of agreement. You as a bank, you receive some agency fee, okay? Uh, you do not, uh, you have a fixed percentage of agency fee. Okay. Now, uh, let me show you a classification of Shukuk. It seems my internet connection is unstable. I don't know why. Okay. Uh, uh, it will be better if you uh, mute your microphone. Uh, unless you want to participate in discussion, okay? So, uh, Shuku can be classified uh, based on the underlying asset. So first category is asset-based, second category is asset-backed, and third category is hybrid. So we'll know about this uh, one by one, but not all of them. Uh, so at this point, we just try to give you the highlight that how the asset-based concept is different from asset-backed concept. So asset-backed concept of Shukuk is a kind of thing that when you already uh, this one asset backed, okay. So you already have an asset. Say for example, you have a building, okay. You have a building and that is the asset. And by keeping this building as an underlying, uh, you, I mean, uh, you are the issuer, you have issued the Shukuk securities. 
So this building is generating uh, rental income. And uh, when there is a issue that the payment to the shuku holders are not uh, settled well, in that case, the building will be sold. So this kind of uh, shuku, uh, when there is already an underlying asset, and that is generating or yielding income, that kind of uh, shukuk will be known as asset-backed shukuk. And uh, more common type of asset uh, shukuk are not asset-backed shukuk, more common type of uh, shukuk is asset-based shukuk. So in case of asset-based shukuk, the using the proceeds asset will be per, using the proceeds from shukuk, uh, assets will be purchased and later assets will be sold. So if there is a issue that Shukuk holders are not getting their, uh, are not getting the, are, uh, are not getting their claim properly or are not getting the, um, are not getting the proceeds properly, uh, in that case, they might not have the full ownership of the asset uh, because their uh, payment to the asset uh, is not complete. Uh, repayment is more safer when the uh, shukuk is asset backed rather than asset based. So in our uh, shukuk class, we will uh, explore more about uh, asset based shukuk. And in asset based shukuk, we will see uh, the salam shukuk, uh, istisna shukuk, which are sale based shukuk. And we'll also see some least based shukuk, which includes the ijara. And there are further classif uh, further uh, customization of ijara type of shukuk, uh, which will not uh, explain more in detail. And we'll also uh, see some other shukuk if the time permits us, okay? So let's proceed. Uh, to some numbers, uh, some statistics, which uh, shows that how the number of shukuk issuance has been growing uh, in the period from 2000 to 2012. So we see that uh, number of shukuk issuance was uh, close to 10 in 2000. Uh, though the Shuku concept was first coined in 1988 uh, in a FICA Academy conference in Jeddah. And in 2012, it uh, was raised to the number which is greater than 800. Uh, it is the number of Shuku issuance, uh, not the market capitalization of Shuku. I have mentioned one uh, figure uh, which uh, reflects the value. So you see in the uh, latest 2019, uh, it was uh, 162.1 billion uh, Shukuk issuance. Shukuk was issued in the global market, and it is expected by 2021, uh, it will exceed the 200 billion. Okay, but you see in 2004, the number was staggeringly low. Uh, 6.9 billion uh, Shukuk was uh, issued. Uh, in that time, okay? And based on the uh, classification, uh, I mean, uh, based on the issuing country, uh, this uh, chart has been prepared and you see which country is dominating the Shukuk issues. And you see the countries Malaysia, which accounts for 47% is, uh, is issuance of Shukuk in global financial market. And Malaysia uh, is followed by uh, United Arab Emirates. 
and uh, which is followed by Pakistan, then Saudi Arabia. No, uh, UAE is followed by Saudi Arabia, then Saudi Arabia is followed by Indonesia. Uh, then uh, Pakistan and uh, I do not know uh, which country is this, uh, Cayman. Okay, uh, but in our country, uh, government issued Shukuk first uh, for a water project in uh, late December 2020. Uh, have you heard about that project? Uh, government issued Shukuk in 2020? Anyone? Anyone? Have you heard that government issued Shukuk in our country first? And this is the picture which is de depicting in terms of currency denomination of Shukuk. And uh, in the similar line, the Ringgit, the Malaysian national currency is dominating. Uh, uh, and this is followed by the dirham of UAE. Okay. And based on the Shukuk manager's uh, participations, you see the HSBC, uh, it's not the first, uh, but May Bank uh, is probably from Malaysia, is dominating the Shukuk Manager's League. So, I was asking the question that can you uh, have, has anyone heard that uh, Bangladesh government issued a Shukuk in late uh, 2020 in December for a government? Uh, water based project. Anyone? If the answer is no, uh, so that I can uh, show you the uh, news. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, we haven't heard. You have not heard. Okay, so you see that uh, Bangladesh Bank and Finance Ministry signed uh, for 80, uh, 8,000 crore Islamic bond, uh, which actually reflect, uh, indicates the Shukuk for safe water supply. Okay, so what is the underlying project? Underlying project is the safe water supply. And uh, I'll just try to highlight something so that it will help us to understand the Shukuk structure later. Uh, first of all, you see that who is the originator? The finance ministry is the originator. Okay, this is one of the concepts we'll be using. Okay, originator. Finance ministry is the originator. So the concept is that the originator is that entity which actually needs the financing. Okay. And a Sharia compliant bond and the central bank will act as the SPB, special purpose vehicle. So note that uh, originator does not have the expertise to raise financing for itself. And it might not have the capacity to deal with the investors and regulators, financial market, these things. You probably have heard about the role of investment bank Have you heard about the main uh, role of investment bank? Yes, sir. So you know the reason that why investment bank exists, right? So a special purpose vehicle also exists for the similar uh, purpose. And it, it is actually, uh, I mean, set by a bank, okay? 
set by a particularly Islamic bank or uh, window, Islamic window of a conventional bank. So for the issuance purpose, this SPB is created. Okay, so who acted as a SPB in the water, uh, safe water supply project of government, the central bank. Okay. Uh, and you see they have written it with very uh, in a similar to a treasury bond, but they have not mentioned alike treasury bond, right? Similar. So what does it mean? There are some uh, similarities, some dissimilarities, okay, but they are not alike. Okay. And what is the project? The project title is Safe Water Supply for the Whole Country on January 1. And the fund raised by the Shukuk will be invested for the project. Okay. Can you recall that I mentioned that Shukuk financing must be used for a productive purpose? And another, yes, con another condition that purpose should be Sharia compliant. Okay. So you cannot float Shukuk for the purpose of setting a theater. Got it? Okay, but you see that Shukuk, uh, sorry, uh, what should I say? The theater is also kind of, uh, has some productive capacities, but it is not a Sharia compliant project, right? Okay, so you see some other features, profit has been mentioned as 4.69%, which has a five-year maturity, and there is no maximum investment ceiling, and minimum investment limit is Taka 10,000. Uh, okay. This is important for you. The finance ministry issued guidelines on the investment criteria of the Shukuk uh, and investors, okay, this thing says very interesting. Investors will receive a profit of 4.69% on their aggregate investment in the Islamic bond. And the central bank has fixed the rate based on the Bangladesh government Islamic investment bond. Okay. Based on the Bangladesh government Islamic investment bond. Now, let me make you aware of one thing. If it would be mentioned here that the central bank has fixed the rate based on the uh, call money rate uh, prevailing in the uh, banking, uh, uh, I mean, in the financial market of our country, would it be Sharia compliant? No, sir, it deals with the interest. That's why, no. Okay, thanks. The last declared profit sharing ratio of the six month, this one, this reference, this reference bond, this Bangladesh government Islamic investment bond, their profit sharing ratio uh, in the last declared profit, uh, last, uh, I mean, last, the pre immediate past, the 3.69% and the central bank has added one percentage point to settle on the rate for the Shukuk. Okay, so 3.69 plus one is equal to 4.69. And their profit will be paid on a half yearly basis. And okay, now who will be participating as an investor? Banks, corporate institutions and individuals. Okay. And if the bidding amount, investors will be bidding for the investment. And if the interested amount for making investment exceeds the targeted fund, the auction committee will allocate the certificates proportionately among the bidders. Okay. Uh, okay, this is the rationality of the project. And these are other things which uh, highlights the rationale of taking the project, okay? And the, how the Shukuk will operate. The government will hand over the ownership of the project to the central bank. Now, let me ask you, who was the originator and who was the SPV? Sir, our ministry uh, was the originator. 
and the central bank is the SPV. Okay. Now you see the Minister of Finance is equal to the government here. Ministry of Finance is equal to the government in this case. Okay. Yes, now they are the originator. And government will transfer the ownership of the project to whom? To the, uh, I mean, the originator will transfer the ownership of the project to whom? To the SPV. Okay. To the SPV. Now, what you have got? Uh, who will issue the Shukuk certificate? And who will raise the fund? Is it the responsibility of the originator or the SPB? Sir, SPB. Sir, SPB. SPB will issue the Shukuk certificate and will raise the uh, fund. Okay. And you see the government will rent the project from the central bank for the time being and provide a particular amount of rent regularly to the BB. The government will rent the project, take the rental, uh, take it rental uh, on a rental basis, okay, from the central bank, and will provide a particular amount of rent regularly to the BB. Does it look like a lease agreement? Does it look like a lease agreement that? Uh, uh, Bangladesh Bank or the SPB is leasing the property out to the government and government is making some rental payment? Yes, sir. Looks like lease agreement. Okay. So you see, when the government will hand over the ownership of the project, how an entity can hand over the ownership of the project to another entity? Should it be a sale agreement? or without sale agreement, it can happen. Uh, I forget about the government, central bank, these things. Just think of how uh, one party can hand it's over the... Uh, it should be a sale agreement, right? Okay. And you see it's there has agreement. been a sale agreement and you see there has been a lease agreement. Okay. So it is known as the lease back. It is known as the lease back and it is known as the sale agreement. And in aggregate, this agreement is uh, can be... Uh, understood as a sale and leaseback agreement. Sale and leaseback agreement. And you see the central bank is getting rental income from whom? Or the SPB is getting rental payment from whom? The originator or the investor? Central so bank. Investor. Central, central bank. bank central investor. bank is getting. We'll... Rental payment from the government or from the investor? Try to understand. Central bank. Investors. Central bank is getting rental income from the government or from the uh, investors? From the government. From the government. Government is here a uh, lazy. Government in this particular case lazor, is a lazy or laser? It's a laser. How? If the government is the laser, why government is paying rental income to the central bank? Who is now the owner of the project? Central bank or the government? After handi hand handing over? Sir, the Bangladesh Bank. Bangladesh Bank is the owner, owner of this fund. Bangladesh Bank is the owner of the project. Of the project. Okay. So Bangladesh Bank has leased out the water project to the government, and in exchange for it, government. Uh, government is paying rental to the uh, Bangladesh Bank, is it? Up to this clear? Yes, sir. Okay. 
Can you remember that I have mentioned that Shukuk has a particular maturity? Yes, sir. Okay. What happens in what happens in maturity? The investors. Okay. Uh, before going uh, to that part, let me ask you. Uh, you have made it clear that central bank or the SPB is getting the rental income from the government or from the originator. Okay. And that rental income will be used for what? That rental income will be used for paying the fixed income or paying the profit to the Shukuk investors, which is 4.69%. So paying the fixed income, sir. Yeah, paying the fixed income, 4.69% to the investors. From where this cash flow is coming? From the rental paid by the government to the central bank? Or from yes, uh, paid by the originator to the SPV? Up to this clear? The, the rental payment paid, paid by the government, sir. Okay, this income rental payment income paid by the government the to the SPV. Okay, SPV so has got the payment, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, investors need to be paid by the SPB. Investors of what? Invest uh, Shukuk investors, right? So, Shukuk investors will get their payment from the SPB. Now, the question is how the SPB will make the payment to the Shukuk investors by using the rental payment they have received from the originator? Yes, sir. that's the idea. Okay. Okay. Now, at the maturity, what will happen? The principal should be repaid to the investors, Shukuk investors. At the yes, end sir. of the maturity, the principal should be repaid to the Shukuk investors. There is a principal, right? Like the bond, there is a principle in case of Shukuk also, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, from where this principle will come? Okay. Now, you see, can you recall that uh, sale has already happened? Uh, lease has already happened. Now, at the end of the maturity, the asset will be purchased back by the government or the originator from the central bank or the SPB. At the end of the maturity, originator will purchase the asset back from the SPB. Now, when the government will purchase the asset back from the SPB, should the government pay the price to the SPB? The market price? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. That market price of the asset will be used for paying the principal repaid repayment to the Shukuk investors. Right, sir. Have we got it? Okay, there are some other issues that there will be a trustee, there will be a Sharia. Uh, committee and you see the government has already uh, plans to float more shukuks to implement large projects said by a central bank official uh, although the earnings from the shukuk will not be spent to manage a deficit financing as per sharia law the new tool will give respite to the government from shelling out a considerable amount of money to implement infrastructure project you see the infrastructure infrastructure projects are mostly Sharia compliant and are mostly productive uh, type of project, okay? And you see that they have tried to uh, summarize the difference between the Shukuk and the treasury bond, okay? Can you recall that they have mentioned that similar to treasury bond? Can you recall that I highlighted this? Yes, sir. Okay, but what they are mentioning here, the difference between 
Shukukan treasury bond. This is the important thing. Uh, I would like to request you to look at this. Okay. Now let's return to our uh, lecture. Okay. In case of asset backed Shukuk, the nominal value of the Shukuk should be equal to the asset value at a start. Okay. So in case of asset backed Shukuk, there is already an asset and that asset value should be equal to the total issuance value of the Shuku. I already have mentioned that the payment amount of the Shuku should not have any reference to the interest payment, okay? And what is the way that SPV works? I already have mentioned what is the purpose of uh, forming an SPV, okay? Asset sold to SPV and then list back you just have see, uh, you try to just review what you just have seen. Asset has been sold to the SPB and then leased back. Okay. And who was the SPB in uh, the case part we just have seen? Central bank. Okay. And promise to buy back asset from the SPB on maturity. You just have got it. Okay. And who is promising? Who are promising? Originator and the SPB. Yes, sir. And who is issuing the Shukuk certificate? The SPB. SPB. Okay. It is not the originator. Okay. And SPB enters a trust agreement with the investors. Clear? The uh, investors uh, for the beneficiaries. So you know that the assets will be uh, managed in a way that the investor's interest will not be uh, will not be compensated or sorry investors uh, interest will not be uh, hampered okay now let's look at uh, some specific type of uh, shukuks but before uh, looking at some specific type of shukuk i'm just giving you uh, one uh, homework that we just have seen one particular case that happened in uh, previous uh, year, December, uh, that government issued Shukuk. I'm just trying to give you the work that you open this file uh, from, the <coughs> from the web, it is available. The Beximko Green Shukuk Al Istisna Shukuk uh, this the issue value was 30 billion taka and the profit rate was 9% plus plus uh, profit rate and there are other features convertible or redeemable asset backed green shuku. So uh, how many features are here? Okay, you need to analyze it from our discussion. Okay. And you will see the originator. I'm confident that you will not ask uh, from me that now who is the originator? Okay, you already have got it. The originator uh, who should work as an originator. And you see that they have mentioned the overview of the project. Okay, uh, this is not the first Shukuk in our country. We just have seen the first Shukuk in our country was uh, floated by Bangladesh government. Okay, now the issuer. I already have mentioned an issuer will be created. The issuer will be SPB, okay? And this should be registered and uh, for your uh, enhancement of knowledge, I would encourage you to go uh, to the website of Bangladesh Securities and Exchange Commission. You see the rules for issuing Shukuk and it will enhance your knowledge. And you see the key features of the Shukuk. And you see some things, uh, some components are already common, what we already have discussed. And you see the summary information. And here you see the tenure, okay? And the profit rate, okay? So one thing I like to highlight from here that, uh, okay, their profit rate is 9% is the base rate plus profit margin rate. So it has been tagged with the uh, 
dividend percentage and uh, I can't recall right now uh, that from the declared dividend, uh, it will be uh, calculated uh, by comparing the div uh, declared dividend with the 9% uh, base rate of the uh, Shuku. And minimum subscription due, uh, minimum uh, issuance date, and when the subs uh, and the key part is you see in a short originator is the Beximco for their two pro two type of projects. Uh, one type of project is power project, uh, which are solar based. Uh, then another project is uh, their textile based project, and they have mentioned that uh, the proceeds will be used for these projects and these projects are green projects. That's why they have mentioned that their Shukuk is green Shukuk. So I will request you to explore that uh, there is a blue Shukuk, okay? And you'll see uh, the Shukuk which will be uh, used for financing the sea uh, or marine based projects. Uh, those Shukuks are uh, known as the blue shukuk okay and who will work as trustee and who will work as issue manager and another thing i like to highlight though the rating is uh, essential in any fixed income security uh, in the conventional bond another difference uh, conventional bond usually uh, investors rely much on the rating and the rating of the conventional bond is relatively easier than the rating of the Islamic Shukuk. Uh, and because of the involvement of underlying asset, uh, it seems difficult to the rating companies to uh, evaluate the marketability of the and the cash flow generating capacity of the uh, underlying project okay then what are the ways that the credibility of repayment has been enhanced to give the investors confidence to make investment in the Beksim Shukuk and that what they will be doing and you see some things you already have been uh, made familiar in your financial management course if I'm not wrong you probably have learned about the sinking fund and they have uh, made agreement with the uh, receivables uh, to sell their power and they already have made agreement with the government uh, that who will purchase the uh, you see the payment back by the government okay so you see when the government is the recipient of the products or recipient of the services uh, how much secure you are and there are also involvement of the uh, Takaful uh, company in case of total loss even. So you will see, uh, this is the kind of summary prospectus, but uh, the detailed prospectus is also available. Probably it is uh, about uh, 50 pages. Uh, if you have interest, I believe you, uh, some of you should have interest so you will explore this in detail and uh, there might be a case that you will be working uh, in a place after five years to issue a shukuk in our country uh, for the uh, for any kind of project okay and i was mentioning the convertibility here that after the at the end of the maturity you will have the option to convert your uh, bond to the Beximco shares at the average market price uh, at a discounted rate, 25% discount rate from the weighted average market price of the ordinary shares of Beximco in DSC of last 20 trading days prior to the record date of conversion. Okay, so whatever I will, uh, I'm showing you this document to give you the assignment that uh, look at this and try to understand it and 
it will help you to know more about the shukuk and also relate it what you are learning here uh, and unfortunately the investors uh, are very much overwhelmed uh, when the government issued shukuk in 2020 december and there was a uh, four to five times over subscription if i'm not wrong uh, you can explore uh, the newspapers uh, in that time you will see that four to five times <clears throat> uh, over subscription for the government shukuk but unfortunately the less optimism uh, was observed in case of the shukuk issued by the Beximco. So a number of times for uh, the subscription closing date was extended. Uh, even after that, the subscription was not satisfactory. Later, the financial institutions by the uh, request or the by the persuasion of the regulators, they subscribed the Beximco Shukuk and uh, the subscription was closed uh, several months ago, so far I can recall. Initially, I was interested to participate or I wanted to become an investor in the Beximco Shukuk, but uh, knowing about uh, the prospects, knowing about the history of what happened to this originator, uh, investors to this originator, uh, and also knowing some uh, uncertainties and knowing some issues which have not been explained in a clearer way and uh, observing uh, pessimism among uh, my invest uh, my peer groups uh, later I decided uh, not to uh, make investment there but I was also interested to be one of the subscribers of uh, and you see that uh, the government Shukuk, which was uh, issued for the water, uh, safe water project, uh, was not available to the individual investors, so far I can recall. Uh, uh, if it is available, the subscription amount was uh, bigger, uh, so small investors like me uh, was not eligible to participate there. Okay. So let's proceed uh, uh, some specific type of shukuk. Uh, first one is Ijera type of shukuk structure. What we already have seen uh, is uh, Ijera type of shukuk structure. And uh, <clears throat> Ijera shukuk is a kind of asset based shukuk. And uh, you just have seen the shukuk uh, issued by the central bank as an SPB on behalf of the originator government. And that uh, shukuk uh, looks uh, like a sale and lease back ijara. And uh, br briefly, it is uh, uh, in kind of ijara shukuk. Let me summarize what we have learned, okay, uh, from the case what we have seen together. So what happened first? Can you recall? What happened first? Government uh, or Ministry of Finance will hand over the project uh, to the SPB. Can you recall? Can you recall? Are you there with me? Yes, sir. Okay, so thanks God that you have not left me alone. So sometimes I feel that I am uh, <laughs> I am speaking lonely. I am speaking alone, and there is no audience there. Uh, you are already no, sir. Uh, okay. okay. Sometimes you need to uh, create noise, uh, but not that much. Uh, I mean, create noise by asking something that might be silly. Uh, but that will make me sure that you are uh, listening to me. Okay. Okay. Uh, so government uh, as an originator uh, has sold the water project to the uh, SPB. Okay. The central bank. So there has been a sale agreement, right? There has been a 
uh, sale agreement. So this happened first, right? So we can name it as a number one. Now, uh, now you see that uh, SPB needs to make payment to the originator for uh, purchasing this from the originator. Now the question is how SPB will uh, purchase this from the originator. Uh, SPB needs cash. So how SPB will purchase this? SPB will issue security. Okay, SPB will issue security. What kind of security? Uh, Shukuk security. Okay, so specifically you would say this is, if it is Ijara uh, Shukuk structure, you will say that this is a kind of Ijara Shukuk. So SPB has issued Ijara Shukuk and uh, to the Islamic investors. And what you have received in exchange of, uh, for issuing the Shukuk security, you have received the cash. And now this cash will be used. Uh, this cash will be used uh, to purchase the asset from the originator. Now, uh, the first thing has already happened. Okay. Now, what will happen yeah. in the second case? Okay. You see, uh, there will be a lease agreement between the originator and the SPP because the project will actually be required by the originator. It is not actually required by the SPB. SPB is purchasing this uh, for the purpose of structuring the shukuk or structuring the uh, lease agreement. Okay. So actually, this project is used or this project is required by the government or the originator in our case. Okay. So there should be a lease agreement. So when there is a lease agreement, uh, okay, let me identify it as two, and this is three. They have issued the security, and in exchange, they have got it. And let me identify it as a lease agreement. And when the uh, SPB has taken the lease, uh, sorry, uh, originator has taken the lease from the SPB in exchange of the lease agreement. What will the originator repay to the SPB? Uh, originator will repay rental. Okay. This rental is actually be used for making the payment, contractual payment. Uh, okay, uh, remember, uh, it is not actually permitted that I am giving a guarantee. So when you are giving a guarantee, it looks like a conventional bond. Okay. So you will see that in text, it is mentioned that the guarantee uh, is not permissible uh, in Shukuk structure, but you see, uh, you'll see uh, that this rental payment is used for the a uh, periodic income to the Shukuk investors. Okay. Uh, now the thing is that uh, this will actually happens later. Uh, I mean, uh, the principal payment, but you see this rental payment will be shifted or will be transferred to the SPB. So what else SPB will do this? SPB will use this proceed rental payment for making the coupon payment to the Shukuk investors. So let me identify it as a number five. And this is number six. Okay. Now, at the end of the maturity, what will happen? At the end of the maturity, can you recall what will happen? Yes, sir. Originator will uh, purchase it back. Okay. Now, and originator, when originator will purchase the uh, list asset, 
in that case, the amount for principal repayment will be available to the SPB, which will be uh, given to the Islamic investors. Uh, Islamic investors as a principal repayment. Okay, so here it is issue price on maturity, reimbursement of issue price on maturity. Okay, so I'm not explaining these things. Uh, this concept, you will see this concept are things what we already have uh, understood. But let me show you a diagram step by step so that you can understand uh, what uh, will come uh, first and what will come later. So this is the first, okay? Originator will sell the asset to the SPB at a purchase price on cash basis. And what do you expect? What is the second? What is the second? The organizer, organizer to, uh, originator pay rent to SPB. Sir, uh, SP, SPB will issue certificate for the investors. Okay, let's see who is correct. Okay, the sale should be completed first. The sale should be completed first. So sale can be completed only when the SPB has the money to pay to the originator. So how SPB will have the money when SPB will issue the Shukuk security to the investors, SPB will have the money from the proceeds of issuing the Shukuk. Okay, now uh, tell me what will be the number three? What do you expect? Sir, originator will pay hmm. rental payment to SPB. Okay. Uh, this is actually part of the sale agreement that investors have transferred the proceed to the SPB. I mean the uh, Shukuk proceeds, the issue price then SPB has transferred the proceeds to the originator, then the sale transaction is completed. Then what you just have mentioned, the rental payment will be paid by the originator to the SPB, it will be the number four. Okay, there will be a lease agreement. There will be a lease agreement. So when there will be a lease agreement, obviously then the fo uh, following transaction will be the rental payment, right? And the rental payment is now, uh, is a regular flow from the originator to the SPB. And this flow will be used for what? The fixed uh, fixed income for the investors. Okay. Distribution of rental payment will be used for making a profit payment to the Shukuk holders or, or the investors. Okay. Now, what should come next at maturity? SPB will sell the asset to the investors or the originators. will sell the asset to the originator and you need you need to understand that uh, originator will be compelled will be agreed at inception of the lease agreement that at the end of the maturity spb will sell the asset to the originator and originator will purchase the asset back but there will be no specification of the price Okay, the price will be decided based on the prevailing market price at the maturity. And now you see what will happen when the originator has purchased the proceeds from the uh, selling asset by the SPB to the originator will be used for uh, clearing the proceeds to the uh, principal payment to the investors. Okay, so I believe you have got the Ijara Shukuk. Now, uh, this is just a comparison with the conventional instruments or conventional fixed income securities. As I already have mentioned, the bills are for very short term, 30 days or uh, 91 days uh, or seven days or 14 days, okay? So these are comparable to the Salam Shukuk. So you have got the point that Salam Shukuk is usually for a very shortest term, right? As this is comparable with the conventional bill. 
and murabaha shukuk is comparable to the bond so you have understood that murabaha uh, shukuk is usually for longer term so usually for uh, one year two year or five years and ijara shukuk is has been compared with the notes and musharaka mudaraba has been compared with no conventional instrument because uh, it actually varies. The term actually varies. It might be for a short term. It might be for a longer term. And the convertible shukuk. Can you recall? We just have seen the convertible shukuk in uh, one of our two cases we observed together. Yes, sir. For the Veximco one. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. So this is comparable to conventional reference stock. Why? In conventional bond, you will see that in convertible bond, it means that at the end of the maturity, you can convert a portion or the total amount of principal to the equity instrument. And in case of convertible shukuk, we just have seen that the issuer is giving the offer that investors will, can convert their uh, shukuk to the equity a percentage, 20%, uh, if I'm not wrong, a 20% of the uh, Beximco green istisna shuku can be convertible into the Beximco equity. Uh, I just have shared a concern uh, a few minutes ago that uh, uh, one concern is that uh, gradually, uh, Ijara Shukuk, the profit rate, profit rate of Ijara Shukuk um, is benchmarked with the uh, interest rate. So the, all these are interest rate based rate. Okay, Livor, Kivor, Sibor. Uh, usually these are bank, interbank offering rate uh, and uh, the initial letter indicates the place where these are. Okay, uh, if I'm not wrong, uh, the K means quit. Okay, uh, and another thing, uh, the, it is a concern that you have, you probably can recall that I mentioned that the, this one. Okay, it cannot be done. So when you are doing this, it is a, concerned to the Shukuk market uh, regarding the compliance with the Shukuk. In case of sovereign Shukuk, which is, uh, uh, which might be uh, for, I mean, it might be, uh, it might look like Ijara, Istisna or this kind of Shukuk, but when the, it is the government who is issue, uh, who is on the back of the picture, of the shukuk issuance, I mean, the on the back of the issuer, when the originator is the government, uh, in that case, those shukuks are usually known as the sovereign shukuk, okay? And the government keeps a certain amount of money uh, to, and government keeps a, a number of projects aside for uh, financing through sovereign shukuk. And here for the benchmark, I mean the profit rate, usually the GNP or GDP growth rate is used for the profit rate. So if our GDP growth rate is expected to be 6.5% or 7%, in that case, sovereign Shukuk profit rate is expected to be 7%, okay? In this way, uh, sovereign Shukuk profit rate can be dis uh, defined. Okay, now you probably can recall the istisna we learned in our previous class. Uh, no, uh, the class before our previous class, uh, higher the project is uh, financed by uh, Islamic mechanism. Uh, higher bank looks for the low bidder, uh, lowest bidder of the project 
and bank purchases the project from the lowest bidder and sell it to the uh, client who actually requires the project at a higher price and makes profit out of this. And uh, this is an interesting uh, mode of uh, financing. And uh, one thing I like to highlight here um, that is uh, you uh, you just have seen the Beximco Green Shukuk Istisna, right? So the Beximco Shukuk is uh, based on the Istisna mode of Shukuk. Okay, Beximco Shukuk is not based on the mode of Ijara Shukuk. So uh, this is the Istisna contract. What we saw in previous class when we learned the Islamic financing instrument. Okay. Can you recall this? Uh, is this in a contract? I mentioned to you that I will join. show you a more clear picture in later class. This is the more clear picture of this this in a contract. So this is important to know the ins and out of is this in a contract so that you can understand that how this contract can be backed uh, for the purpose of issuing the istisna shukuk. So let me review it uh, for a few uh, moments. Uh, the istisna contract is uh, happened between client and Islamic bank. So, and Islamic bank now uh, makes an egg, a contract with the interested manufacturers of the project. Uh, then uh, for manufacturer, it requires, uh, I mean, the, the manufacturer requires some payment. Uh, so that payment uh, for constructing the project and that payment will be made either on a spot basis or installment basis. A spot basis means on cash basis uh, or it might be paid at the delivery on a lump sum basis. And when the project will be completed, the manufacturer will transfer the title of the project to the Islamic bank and Islamic bank will transfer the title of the project to the client uh, on the basis of, uh, in exchange of making payment uh, by the client, okay? But usually this, uh, this transfer, I mean, this transfer of title is a kind of the document transfer, okay? The ownership document transfer. But you see that uh, uh, client actually requires a physical project. So who will uh, deliver the physical project? Islamic bank will not uh, deliver the physical project. Actually, the physical project will be delivered by the manufacturer. So Islamic bank uh, does not have any role to uh, take the physical delivery of the asset first, then transfer the, uh, transfer the physical asset to the client later. Okay, so it can be uh, made directly from the manufacturer to the client, but the title, title should be transferred in this way. Title cannot be transferred in this way. Like you cannot write the transfer of title and it has been uh, transferred directly from the manufacturer to the client. It cannot be made, right? Okay. As you see that Islamic bank is selling the project by purchasing it from the manufacturer. So one cannot sell anything uh, without owning that asset. So when Islamic bank can own the asset, if Islamic bank uh, take the transfer of title first and then Islamic bank can sell the title to the client, okay? So in case of Istisna Shukuk, uh, before going there, uh, let me show you some brief uh, th uh, brief context. Uh, it is actually used in case of manufacturing, pro uh, financing manufacturing project. Istisna Shukuk. We are no longer interested with Istisna. We are more interested now to think about this Istisna Shukuk. Manufacturing, real estate development, large industrial project, construction of major items, power plant, ships, aircraft, etc. So what you just have seen uh, and what you have 
observed in Bexim Koistisna Shukuk, you see that uh, it is particularly common here, power plant uh, is a large project and the manufacturing textile, okay? So after production and delivery is completed, the buyer starts repaying the price in deferred installment, which are passed on to the Shukuk holders as the, their payment, okay? <clears throat> so let's see together that how is this Nashukuk is being structured. Uh, so it starts uh, by uh, because initially the SPB, okay, uh, before uh, discussing the structure, let me uh make one thing clear to you otherwise you uh, might create confusion uh that is um, think of it as Beximco. okay the client and buyer is Beximco. got it and uh note that the manufacturer contractor here uh, let me give you the example. Uh, say it is Abdul Monem. They are the project developer. So, Beximco as an originator needs to go to an Islamic bank first. Okay, they need to go first to the Islamic bank and they need to express their interest that they need a project uh, by structuring uh, Istisna Shukuk, then Islamic Bank will decide to create an SPB. Am I clear to you? These three things, how the SPB comes in place, Beximco itself cannot create SPB. Am I clear to you? Beximco or the originator needs to go first to the Islamic bank and then Islamic bank will create the SPB for the this purpose. Up to this clear so that we can proceed. Yes, sir. Okay, fine. Then what SPB will do first, SPB will issue Shukuk certificate. Okay, this is more appropriate uh, wording. Okay, Islamic bond is not, uh, Islamic bond, this term is used for uh, common understanding, but actually Shukuk certificate is distinctive from the conventional bond. So when people see the bond, uh, the bond word, people try to uh, think it as a representative, uh, people tell, tend to think that it is a kind of the Islamic version of fixed income security or the Islamic way of uh, investing in a fixed income security. Okay, actually some uh, to some extent it is true, but not in full extent it is true. It is something misleading. Okay, so Shukuk certificate is uh, more appropriate. Okay, okay. So SPB has issued the Shukuk certificate. Now, what will happen? Uh, the Shukuk holders will purchase the Shukuk certificate. What they will do? They will pay the price. Then SPB uh, has got the proceeds. Then what they will do with the proceeds? What do you think? SPB, when the SPB is issuing the Shukuk certificate, they already have made contract with the Abdul Monem. Okay, I erase this, but I like to read, write this again. Yeah, think of it all uh, out of uh, Islamic Bank. Okay, uh, they have created an SPB for this. Okay, uh, okay, but in case of Beximco, actually, it is the Citibank they have created the SPP. Okay, so by this time when they are issuing the Shukuk, they already have made contract. My, I mean the SPB, uh, 
uh, SPB has made a contract with the Abdul Monem Limited uh, for a project which will be uh, which is required for the Beximco. Okay. Now, the Citibank will pay for the construction from what? From the proceeds they have received from the Shukuk holders. And Abdul Monem has started working on the project and they have been made payment on a spot basis, installment basis, or at the time of delivery on a lump sum basis. Clear? At the end of the completion of the project, what will happen? The projects will be delivered to the SPB. Okay. Note that it is a title transfer or the physical delivery. The title transfer. Title transfer. Now, this title will be sold to the Beximco by the Citibank, right? And the Beximco will make payment of what? Make payment of uh, payment for the project. Now, you see, uh, Shukuk holders require a periodic payment. Shukuk holders require a lump sum payment on principal, okay? Uh, Shukuk holders require two types of payment. One is coupon payment, or another one is principal payment. So by this time, it is not like that Beximco will make all the payment on a later date at the end of the project, okay? During the project, can you recall the maturity of the Beximco project? Five years? Can you recall? And have you seen that the payment will be made on a half yearly basis? Yes, sir. Okay. So on a half yearly basis, when the payment will be made by the Beximco, that payment will be used for what? Coupon payment. Making the coupon payment. And at the end of the project, at the end of the Shukuk, what will happen? The Beksim uh, will make all the dues clear for the project. Okay. And yes, that will sir. be used for what? That will be used for making the principal repayment to the Shukuk holders. Okay. Now, finally, the Salam Shukuk, we have learned about the Salam, uh, which is, uh, uh, though it was introduced basically for uh agriculture it might be used for some projects which uh look like uh for short-term projects but uh, probably there is a mistake here uh in the title uh, i mean uh, these contents are not for salam shukuk but here uh you see the similar kind of a structure for salam shukuk but there are some uh, differences because the Salam Shukuk is not similar to the Istisna Shukuk. So I will ask you to find out the difference uh, between Salam Shukuk and Istisna Shukuk because you know the difference between Salam contract and the Istisna contract. So it will be easier for you. Okay. And the role of assets in Shukuk, I already have mentioned that uh, how asset-based Shukuk and how asset-backed Shukuk are different from each other. And I will uh, try to request you to explore these three things, asset-based, asset-backed Shukuk, and the pass-through certificates. And I, asked, uh, I mentioned initially in the briefing of the contents that there are some risks uh, which need to be borne by the Shukuk investors, which include the credit risk like the conventional bond that the Shukuk originator uh, might not be in a place to make all the payments to the SPB clear. In that case, SPB will make a default to pay the repayment to the Shukuk investors. Uh, the credit risk or the default risk and the market risk uh, indicates ex or includes the risk that you probably can recall that uh, when uh, in case of asset backed shukuk uh, when the 
uh, repayment will not be made uh, clearly uh, or on a due basis. In that case, the asset will be used for uh, clearing the payment of the Shukuk investors. But if the market price of the underlying asset drops and you see that each of the Islamic instrument is directly connected with the asset or with the, some productive activities. So if the market value of that uh, productive asset comes down, in that case, the getting the payment from the asset or getting the payment from the selling of asset will uh, be lower than the expected. And liquidity risk is that uh, Shukuk uh, is an instrument uh, like the conventional equity or bond instrument. It is issued initially in the primary market like IPO. So what I uh, mentioned to you regarding the Beximco Shukuk, it was uh, issued in the primary market first in an IPO basis. And later time, it will be available in the secondary market. So in that case, yeah, you will be able to uh, transfer your uh, title of the Shukuk, but sometimes the secondary market is not adequately liquid so that you will get it difficult to cash out your uh, investment in Shukuk. And note that uh, Shukuk is not considered in a fixed income asset class. So there are some asset classes you probably have heard in financial markets and institution class fixed income okay so there are usually three type of asset uh equity fixed income and derivatives okay so shukuk is uh conventional investors might try to include the shukuk in this fixed income asset class but note that you already have recognized the difference between the conventional fixed income securities and the Shukuk. So Shukuk needs to be considered as a separate asset class because the characteristics are different, okay? So uh, all types of Shukuk might not be uh, saleable in the secondary market. And there's a risk that uh, the expected profit rate, which was uh, set earlier, has become lower because of the uh, prevailing, uh, has been recognized as lower rate because the market rate has become, uh, other comparable market profit rate has gone up, but you are bound to receive that uh, profit, uh, fixed profit rate. And uh, when there is a floating profit rate, there is a risk that your profit might come down than the expected. So this is kind of uh, risk uh, included in the rate of return risk. And there is a shorier risk in a way that uh, uh, thing is like this. Uh, initially, the scholars permitted uh, that this project is, uh, for example, Shoria compliant and this Shukuk is okay because the project is Shoria compliant. But later it has been found that the clause which has been included in the uh, in the shukuk uh, that clause is no longer a sharia compliant because the scholars have changed their views uh, changed their views in that case you are uh, in a position to expose the sharia risk because the interested investors will reduce their interest to buy that asset by the shukuk from you in that case you have to sell it at a lower price and at the same time it might happen that uh, some uh, Shukuk issuers are issuing Shukuk uh, without complying uh, with Shoria properly. In that case, it will create a reputational risk for all type, uh, all the Shukuk uh, floating or uh, issued in the market. Okay, so that's all about for today. Uh, let's end the pros and our today's class here.